All right, so I just got done interviewing Chuck Whittall, who is the owner and founder of Unicorp. If you've seen the Orlando Eye, you've seen O-Town West, you've seen a lot of developments around here. He's actually the fabric of what's coming to so much here in Orlando. So stay tuned to this interview as we dive into his past, what he thinks of coming to Orlando, and so much more. So Chuck, thanks for joining us. Absolutely, good to be here. Man, so I was going through research and I was looking back through articles and people you've worked with in the past. And one thing that popped up over and over again was <laughs> Chuck closes deals. Like you start something and that's what you're known for. What does that make you, how does that make you feel? Uh, you know, uh, I sit on the kick table over there. I wrote a book called Perseverance. And uh, you know, we, we perform on what we go after. We build, uh, gosh, we've got 30 projects at a time going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you say close deals, uh, we probably close 50 deals a year. Even if we're only building 30, we're also building them. We sell, we buy, we sell. Sure. So we, we generally have a closing almost every single week. That's amazing. That's incredible. Yeah, it's, when we look back at, uh, I think last year, when I say 50, I think last year we closed 72 deals. That's incredible. So, That's and this year we'll do more. <laughs> <laughs> With everything kind of going on, like people talk recession, people talk ups and downs. It's a very weird market and you've been in the game for a long time. How does this feel with what's going on right now? Well, the one thing I've learned is you always play to the market. Mm -hmm. uh, there's always a market. It's a good market, a bad market, but there's people always doing business in the market. And, uh, you know, it's a tougher time right now to do business. Interest rates are high, mm -hmm. but uh, doesn't mean you stop doing business. Yeah. You just strategically plan, you know, like right now we're planning on starting a bunch of projects toward the end of the year mm -hmm. that we'll deliver in 2025 because we think 2025 is gonna be a more interest rate friendly environment. And we think there will be more demand for product because there's a lot of people who've slowed down right now because of the rates. So we're just strategically planning for 2025. And now's the time to kind of get into these deals where everybody else is maybe scared a little bit. Yeah, we bought a bunch of land. Uh, we've been going through entitlements and getting it ready to break ground on. Uh, so we've, we've got a lot of projects that we'll be starting in the next several months and we're finishing a lot of projects that we've been working on for the last year and a half. Oh, that's amazing. Do you remember your first development? Yeah, my first development was in Winter Park, Florida, um, across from the Winter Park Village. Uh, I, Brett Hutchins ended up uh, He's, he bought the old Winter Park Mall to redevelop it, and when I heard he was buying the mall, he told me about it, I thought, well, shoot, I better buy some stuff across the street from it. <laughs> and Brett always tells people, Chuck made more money off the Winter Park Village than I did, because <laughs> I went and bought all the pieces across the street, and my first one I did was a small 8,500 square foot development with Starbucks, singular wireless, 1-800 flowers, and we kept it for gosh, a decade and a half before we sold it. Yeah. And, um, uh, and I did Necker Drug Store across the street at the same time. And you know, those were my first retail developments. I started as, a, I had a stucco drywall company before that, uh, a home building company before that, and a stucco drywall company before that. So I've been in the construction business since I was 18 years old at this wow. point. And dad was a, was a firefighter at Winterbottom? Yeah, my dad was uh, uh, chief of Orlando Fire Department um, dispatch. Wow. And so he was a fireman. And I, I was born, you know, people say, you know, why Winter Park uh, or Central Florida? I was born and raised in Winter Park, yeah. and I've been here all my life. And, you know, geographically, I feel like we're lucky because Central Florida is such a great place for growth. Mm -hmm. We have uh, a thousand people a week moving to, the, to Orange County and a thousand people uh, a day moving to the state of Florida. Yeah. So it's, you know, and I, and I always say that the business we're in is we cater to growth. <laughs> you know, we provide shopping, we provide grocery stores, we provide apartments, we provide hotels, we provide restaurants, we provide to the, the growing, you know, uh, population population. Yeah. So I noticed, um, uh, speaking of that, housing is a big one. I mean, with a thousand people moving to Orange County a week. So I saw some of the ways you're pushing maybe like luxury apartments, which some developers say luxury. And that just means like it's got vinyl plank floors, but like you're actually building really nice higher end apartments. Tell me about that. Yeah, we're doing all sorts of luxury things. Uh, uh, at our O-Town project, we have uh, clubhouse, we went over the top, we built a $15 million clubhouse with uh, a gym that is as good as anything 24 hour fitness or LA fitness would have. We've got a three meal a day restaurant, we have room service, you can sit out by the pool, you can order a cocktail or a sandwich. Uh, we've got a steam room, we've got a virtual reality room, we've got a sauna, 
we've got a, a massage room, uh, we've got pool tables, uh, you know, the apartments are beautiful, there's, uh, the swimming pool is, I don't think I've ever seen a larger swimming pool in an apartment complex anywhere in the nation. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, we're doing another one up the street called the Lux, where we're doing real wood floors, not vinyl floors. Uh, we've got wine uh, coolers in them, uh, marble in the bathrooms. Um, it's it's just it's what you'd expect to find at a nice five star hotel. Yeah, and so obviously you've got a great forethought. We've proven this now, and so there you think the demand for Central Florida luxury apartments is is there and, and will continue to grow. It is. Uh, you know, we've got right now just in Central Florida. 1,200 units under construction, and per each apartment complex, we're leasing two or three units a day. So they they are filling up very quickly. Yeah, talk to me about what you're seeing in maybe the job market. I know the job you're you're a job creator in the development side, but um, you know we've got tourism out our back door. But things are starting to change, and you're an Orlando kid, right? So you grew up here. How have things changed, and maybe where do you see us going in terms of a job market here? Well, the job market I think is still very strong here. Um, everybody's having a problem hiring people because I think there's uh, a lack of workers, but which means everybody's working, which for us it's good because everybody can pay rent and they can afford to go out to dinner. Yeah. We've seen wages go up. Um, you know, gosh, our you used to think that an apartment dweller would you know make thirty, forty, fifty thousand a year. We have uh, our average apartment complex. I think uh, the average household income is over one hundred and thirty thousand a year. Wow! So you know it's just a different lifestyle to live. It's it's maintenance free. You know, you've got a nice clubhouse. You got a swimming pool. You don't have to worry about uh, taking care of yards and things like that. Yeah. So we're finding a different demographic. Uh, it's not necessarily a starter place for people. It's 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 just a lifestyle convenience and able to travel, and not worry about you know their their home. So so we try to make it a home and make it a place where people want to stay. That's huge. I'm sure less turnover that way, better quality tenants, and it's just for you as a developer it makes a ton of sense. A lot less turnover. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk maybe about different areas of town, right? What's going on? I'd love to start maybe downtown because I don't know if you don't have anything going on in the business district right now. We don't have anything downtown Orlando. Um, it seems like hard, it's, it's hard to get going. I don't know what it is. Yeah, uh, there's been so much built downtown. You know, we had an opportunity to do a few things there and we didn't do them. But uh, we've been busy in Lake Mary, Winter Park, uh, this side of town, Southwest, Lake Nona. Uh, we've got a project in Sarasota. Um, we're building, uh, we're one of the largest Wawa developers in the country. Huh. Um, and Wawa, we're their preferred developer in the Ohio Valley. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll probably build 50 Wawas there this year in the Ohio Valley between Kentucky, uh, Ohio, Indiana, and Tennessee. And uh, so we're busy up there. We've got a big project in Michigan. You know, we're building our hotel on uh, the beach in Sarasota, Longboat yeah. Key. St. Saint, Saint Regis, right? St. Regis, wow, yeah. It looks beautiful. We're sold out. Um, we've got 600 people working there a day. We will be finished in uh, July, open next year. That's incredible. So we're excited about that. That's super cool. 13 years. Really? 13 year project? 13 year project. Can you talk about that deal? How does that something like it come up? Um, you know, when my daughter was little, um, we would go to Longboat Key, and I thought, you know, I'd like to build something there where, you know, I could go build sandcastles with her and play. Yeah. And uh, I tried to buy one piece of property. Somebody else bought it. I wasn't able to get it. And uh, then the Colony, which was the first condo hotel in the state of Florida, um, closed. And I kept driving by, and I thought, let me try to buy this. And it was a triple bankruptcy, Oof. dozens and dozens and dozens of lawsuits, and I thought that'd be a good idea to get involved in. And, <laughs> Why and, not uh, sign myself up? Where I was told it'd take two years to settle all the litigation, it took uh, ten years to settle all the litigation. Wow. And um, so I finally acquired all the property, and um, it had every luxury flag wanted to be there, and we settled on the St. Regis. And so one day I'll be able to build uh, sand castles with my grandkids there and you my go. daughter. She's grown up now. <laughs> it took a little bit longer than you wanted. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a, it's a great project. It was the first condo hotel in the state of Florida, and we did the first judicial condo termination ever in the state of Florida. Wow. That's how we were able to finally resolve all the litigation on it and get free clearance uh, title to the property to be able to build it. That's so exciting. we're 70% done with it right now. That's so exciting. Congratulations. Thank you. So Icon Park and I Drive. There's a lot of stuff coming with <laughs> Epic Universe, and now the, I saw the W Hotel got announced, and then the tallest, tallest hotel in Orlando is going to be over there. It seems like they're seeing a bit of resurgence. What do you think about that tourism corridor and what's going on? You know, um, when I bought Mercado, uh, Mercado was one of the first outdoor shopping malls in the country, and uh, it went into failure. Gosh, 2000. Five, I think I bought it. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard to believe it's been almost 20 years, but uh, 
it went into bankruptcy and I bought it from the bank and everybody thought, oh, you're going to rehab it. And I said, no, we're going to bulldoze it. <laughs> but, you know, we had 20 acres right on International Drive. Yeah. And International Drive at the time, I don't know how long you've been around, but it was in decline. There were, you know, kids driving cars up and down the street, police issues down there and stuff like that. And uh, I just thought it was a good opportunity. And so, um, you know, we came up with the idea to put the wheel there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we did, um, you know, the, the big Ferris wheel and made an entertainment complex. And it really did rebirth iDrive. Yeah. It just changed iDrive completely. And, and then Universal comes in uh, years later, obviously, now they're under construction and new hotels. And it's just changed uh, the whole area. Yeah. So it's been pretty cool. Yeah, it's really cool. I, I remember, I've, been, I've only lived here for seven years, but before that, it was like, I'd come here for conferences and people were like, you don't really want to walk too far up that road, <laughs> you know, like, cause it was, and now it's, it's packed. There's every yeah. weekend, there's just tons of people there. And I feel like that's maybe what we need a little bit more of is that outdoor lifestyle. And I feel like that's what you do really well. They're not strip malls. They're like outdoor spaces that people can live, work, play. And, and that's what we're doing. We're building one in uh, Fort Myers, uh, Estero. We're building a 100 acre outdoor entertainment lifestyle center where we're going to have an outdoor roller rink. Uh, we're doing outdoor pickleball, shuffleboard, food truck park. And same thing with the Fashion Square. We bought the Fashion Square Mall. Mm -hmm. And we bought that right before COVID. Um, but, you know, we put it on hold because of COVID. But now we're in the middle of getting deep on the plants and you know we want to make it an outdoor lifestyle center and yeah. you know, everybody likes dining outside sitting on the patios like I said the pickleball the outdoor roller skating rinks and things like that are popular they're good for community dog parks and and you know so that's the lifestyle trend now which has migrated away from retail you know the retail we do is uh, I always say you you leave with a haircut or you leave with a full belly or <laughs> you, you know uh, where people go they drink they eat they get their hair done they exercise they're not generally walking out with a bag of goods sure. and you know that's all taken care of for the most part today and online, online. and uh, you know the the malls the luxury brands are all doing well like at Millennium Mall and things like that so uh, but the smaller um, the retail stores just are not you know, flourishing like they used to be. Yeah, Let's go maybe a, a mindset shift if we could around, around COVID. So COVID happens, you've got all these developments, you're retail heavy, you got all this kind of stuff. What is, what is that, what's Chuck thinking through 2020 like at this point? I mean, how do you make it through and not only make it through, but you're thriving? Well, uh, you know, at the time when we got shut down and everybody got shut down, you know, I realized how devastating it was going to be to my tenants. Mm. Uh, luckily, we made a couple big sales months before that happened. We sold a few hundred million dollars for the property, and you know, we were prepared um, to go through a storm. But um, you know, I went to my tenants. I gave them all three months free rent. I helped them out. I knew they couldn't survive, and I didn't think it was good letting all the tenants go out of business and go. Gee, what am I going to do? Sure. I was better off to help them. And uh, you know, the mayor appointed me chairman of the reopening committee, mm -hmm. and so I was the chairman over, gosh, Disney, Universal, SeaWorld, Advent Health, all these big companies yeah. that we were doing these big you know, Zoom calls with. And um, you know, we made the decision uh, collectively as a board to reopen business in Central Florida, which was, as we look back in time, was absolutely the right thing to do, because sure. all the, the states and counties that stayed closed did not have any less cases than we did. Mm -hmm. We just happened to be open and our businesses didn't go broke and we were able to survive. Um, so, you know, COVID really didn't affect us that much. Um, you know, I, I was bothered by the lack of uh, yeah, like they use the term social distancing. We never should even use the term social distancing. It's <laughs> right. a negative term in itself. But, um, you know, it, it was disruptive that it desocialized people. But uh, as far as business, you know, I don't think I lost any tenants. I don't think anybody went out of business over it. Everybody, uh, you know, we helped them out and they were able to survive. And, you know, people wanted to go on living. And, you know, I, I remember you know, going to several different engagements where people would say, this is the new norm. And I would always say, no, this isn't the new norm. It's the temporary abnorm. You know, people <laughs> don't want to live like that. People want to socialize. Sure. Like we just talked about the lifestyle centers. People want to get together. They want to go out places. They want to do things. They want to socialize. And, and um, so I felt comfortable that we would come back to where we are today again. Yeah, that makes total sense. So what's next for Orlando, do you think? I mean, you've seen a big change, I'm sure. <clears throat> what, where do you see us going as a region? Well, you know, Orlando is uh, um, is going to become much more sophisticated. I think, you know, with um, the Nobu Hotel got announced, yeah. and um, 
and you mentioned the W. Well, you know, we're doing the Tao Hotel, and uh, we're doing the Tao Restaurant, and we have some other parts of O Town that we haven't announced yet that are equally as sexy, mm -hmm. uh, times two or three more coming in that will come, you know, be announced soon. Um, I think like with what we're doing over there at O-Town with the Tao Hotel, it's a sophisticated experience. It's different than downtown. Like my daughter will go downtown and, and, um, and, and the downtown is, um, what we're creating is uh, just a more sophisticated experience. Yeah. And we're going to have some great restaurants. And that's what we've lacked in Central Florida is, is really great restaurants. We've had great chains. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Yard House, I've built a few of those. They're great. <laughs> you know, we've got different restaurants here. Eddie V's, which is a wonderful restaurant. But these unique restaurants that you find in New York and Chicago and L.A., you know, we've lacked those and we're getting them now. And I think it's going to change the the face of Central Florida. It's going to change the conventioner. We think our Tao Hotel is going to play very well to the conventioners. We sure. think the restaurant will. And uh, it, it will just offer a more adult experience and not just Disney. Yeah. yeah, we're not just Disney. We're not just Universal. Yeah. Let's you know, level a, up a little bit. Yeah, it's yeah. a great place to go, and, uh, and it's a great place to live, too. Of course, yeah. Two more questions for you. So um, I saw that you were talking about maybe adding like a, a Vegas-style residency show at one time. You had an idea to do this. You think that's something that we're maybe going into or have a I, I would like I would like to see us do that. Right behind the wheel, I was trying to acquire the property. I was getting close on it. Uh, you know, at the time, this is going way back. Uh, uh, when Michael Jackson was alive, yeah. I wanted to bring Michael Jackson here and do a show sure. and have a Michael Jackson show. I thought it would sell out every night. Every night yeah. You know, Michael Jackson performing uh, off International Drive. And, um, you know, I, I thought that would just... So a show like that, like a Celine, like a Michael Jackson, like Britney did in Vegas and these different things, I think would do very well here. I think the... Yeah, the conventions are here, and I think we have the market for it. So I would like to see that happen. Um, we also, you know, at one point looked at trying to see if we could get an NFL team here, and uh, you know, have not been successful at that. But <laughs> but I, I really think Central Florida is is ready for, you know, just that next level of entertainment. Uh, you know, I go to the Bucks games and they're full, and yeah. you know, we certainly have the population here for that. Our soccer team is doing very well here, and uh, yeah, I would like to see that. Um, I, I think it would be something great to offer conventioners. Uh, it, it, I just think it's time. Yeah, I mean, Vegas is getting it right. So they've got all these major sports teams going, and they're a transient kind of area. Yeah. We're way more stable and sure. you know, with, with both of them. I think we've got a massive opportunity. Last question for you. So developer, philanthropist, billionaire, father, what does Chuck want to be known for when it's all said and done? Um, you know, I do what I do because I like to do it. I love doing what I do. And I love giving back to the community. You know, often people think, oh, you're just doing it to make money to be greedy. It's not. I, if I want to retire, I'd go retire. I don't sure. want to do that. I, I like creating. I like uh, uh, mentoring people. I like helping the community out. Um, you know, I was born and raised here. It's been a great place. And, you know, Central Florida's offered me a lot of opportunity. But I just enjoy it. I, I love the the creative artistry aspect of, of coming up with an idea and uh, designing it on paper and building it and getting it open. For, you know, for me, that's, that's like the day we open, uh, you know, I'm like, okay, on to the next <laughs> the one. Idea. And then you know, we turn it over to operations and the company operates it. But um, you know, for me, the fun part is the creation of, of the different things that we do and I enjoy it. And I would uh, drive my wife and daughter nuts if I was home all the time. And yeah. like my daughter, it was a couple weeks ago, I took a couple of days off and and I'm like, I'm bored, we gotta do something. She's like, Dad, see you could never retire. You're bored in one day. <laughs> and yeah, that's I'm just I'm I'm active and I like doing things and I travel a lot. And um and I don't know if you know, but I race Ferrari as well. Well and, how did that come about? Uh my wife was telling me, um for our entire marriage, she's like, You need to get a hobby, you need to get a hobby and work's always been my hobby. And um you know, I've always liked cars and I went to Vegas and I got my professional uh, IMSA license yeah. and um, I thought, you know, I'm going to go compete. And uh, so I started, I was going to race with Lamborghini and Ferrari said, hey, we'd like you to come race with us. And I raced my first race in Atlanta, which I'm actually racing in Atlanta in two weeks. And um, I finished top 10 in my first race and, and I thought, this is fun. Yeah. My wife's like, why did you have to yeah, tell you to get a hobby? Why do you have to get a hobby racing cars? Right. And, <laughs> Some um, people golf. I race Ferraris, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, I uh, won Indianapolis last year, the first race of the season this year in Homestead. Uh, I placed third on day one and second on day two, and 
I came out of uh, the first race being the points leader for Ferrari. And right now I'm number three because I had a bad weekend last week and my car wasn't performing correctly. But uh, I just raced last weekend in Austin and um, I'm racing 10 different countries this year. Not 10 different countries, 10 different races, uh, half of them in the US and then I'm racing Mugello, I'm racing Montreal uh, and I'm racing, uh, where else? Uh, I'm racing um, Le Mans in France, and I'm racing um, Spa, Belgium. Oh man! So I'm gonna have to come out and watch one day. That sounds awesome. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. I bring some of my friends out sometime, and they always say they have a blast. Oh and, my gosh! I mean, yeah, because I get them in the pits, let them sit in the race car, and yeah, you know, I have a full pit crew. So it's completely um, diametrically opposed to what I do every day. I'm <laughs> building buildings, doing architects, engineers, and all that stuff, and then. Uh, when I go to race, we usually get there on a Wednesday and leave Sunday and Wednesday, Thursday, Friday practice, race Saturday, race Sunday. And you know, getting a whole pit crew, being around cars, being helmeted up, strapped in a car and doing 180 miles an hour down the straightaway. So it's, it's, a, it's a fun thing to yeah, do, I it's a great imagine. hobby. Oh, amazing. Chuck, thanks so much, I appreciate you. Thanks, it was a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you.